Okay, everything we've done in electricity so far has been leading to this point. We are now going to discuss AC circuits. So this was the big battle between Edison and Tesla. Edison favored the DC circuit where it's all very simple. You make electrons go this direction and the current goes this direction and nothing's weird. And Tesla said, no, let's have it go this way and then that way and then this way and then that way and then this way and then that way, sloshing back and forth. And as you can see, Tesla won out for household distribution. And there are a lot of reasons for that. One of them is the idea of transformers. One of them we'll talk about in a little bit. But transformers work, require constantly changing flux. So if you've got a constantly changing flux, a consistently changing flux right there, then you can make a transformer. This is the simplest one, right? You just put two coils near each other and you have them share a flux, like I've got a soft magnetic material in here. And then uh, any, um, any flux change in one is the same as the flux change in the other, so you can make voltages dramatically change. And converting from one voltage to another is a really practical thing. So. This is one of the reasons that AC won out and the other one is for a later time for us to discuss. But with AC, we take this definition. We say that the voltage as a function of time is the maximum voltage. I don't care what it is, but it's going to be multiplied by a sine function. And it's, of course, going to be the sine of omega times t. That's going to be in radians per second. So be careful. We're going to be taking the sine of something in radians. And that gives us a graph of, let me get you the V max. This is voltage, and this is time. And it's going to start out here and go like that. So if the voltage is doing that, then <clears throat> this level right here would be V max. If the voltage is doing that, and you've just got a simple resistor, like, I don't know, a hot plate or a toaster or something, then the current will be doing, in fact, exactly the same thing. The current will be changing as a function of time. This is how hard you're pushing, and this is the way the system responds. So it's kind of like a stress-strain relationship again. Uh, and you're going to have, well, certainly you won't have the same value, but we'll expect the zeros to line up, and we'll expect it to have the same structural performance here. This is current as a function of time, and this is I max right here. And we've still got all of our favorite relationships like um, V is I R, uh, but all of these become a function of time. You assume that the resistance doesn't change with time, but if the voltage is going up and down, then the current is similarly going up and down. So inside of my hot plate, I actually have current going this direction and then that direction and this direction and that direction, clockwise and counterclockwise. And in the United States, it changes 60 times every second. It's going forward and back 60 times in every single second. And in Europe and India, shout out to India, I think they've got 50 times every second that it switches direction. And so, <clears throat> if, if, ooh, look at this, look at this. What if we say, what, uh, what, should we try to find out what Vmax is? No, no, let's not try to find out what Vmax is. Let's just say that um, current as a function of time is going to be, well, I guess it'll be V as a function of time divided by R. So it's Vmax over R times the same sine function, sine of omega times t. And now it's time to introduce a really neat concept. These things are called phasers. And a phaser looks like this. First, you get yourself a coordinate system. And I'm just going to define x here and y here. And a phaser is a vector. A phaser, simply put, is just a vector. And the vector is continuously spinning around the origin. That's the definition of a phaser. And this phaser, I'm going to say, is v max long. That's how long it is. And I want to say that the projection, projection of phaser on y-axis is instantaneous value. It helps to look at simulations of these at this point, because I'm not going to be able to rotate that vector around there. But, um, if you know that that sucker is rotating, and I guess we need to label some of these 
angles, this angle is going to be omega times t because, well, that's what's happening here. We initially have a y component, a y projection of zero, and it goes to a y projection of v max, and it takes the time, the time that it takes to do one quarter of a revolution gets us up to right here, because that's a quarter wave, right? And then as it goes around, it goes back to zero again. Yeah, that's right here. This, maybe I can draw you some lines that correspond to various points. When, um, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can show you the phaser in its orientation. So here the phaser is directly up, here the phaser is directly to the left, here the phaser is directly down, here the phaser is directly to the right. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's left or right at this point, but, um, but whether it's up or down tells us whether we have a positive or a negative projection of the vector. So we can put little tick marks all along here and sort of acknowledge that it's th these points that, that we're getting maximum or zero values for our voltage. But remember, I said that the current is doing the same thing, but of course it's, uh, it's Vmax divided by R. So I don't know what R is, but I can draw you a similar phaser, maybe right next to that other phaser. It actually should be right on top of it. And this phaser's length right here is Vmax over R. And Vmax over R defines I max. So in a similar way, at each of these tick mark times, I can say that we have the same orientation for the I max vector. What that means is when there is a maximum current, there is a maximum voltage and vice versa because those guys, oh, you got language for this? These guys are said to be in phase. They're said to be in phase because the phasers line up with each other. So that means if one changes, the other changes, and they have the same time dependence. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, let's think about the definition of, well, I don't like the changing all the time. I would like a value to describe what it actually is. And I'm going to use a value called average. The problem is, the a oh, <clears throat> what's the average of this graph? Well, let's see, it spends half its time up and half its time down. The average of that graph over one full rotation, nothing. And the average of that over an next rotation, nothing. So the average isn't going to help us at all. But what if we square it? Do you know what the square of the sine function looks like? The square of the sine function is like, yeep, 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 yeep. So that's time and that's voltage, for instance, but it's voltage squared. And so voltage squared is, uh, let's look at that. It would be V max square times sine square of omega times T. So V squared still depends on time, but what if I take the average of that? Now take mean, and if I take the mean of that sucker right there, I'm going to say V squared averaged, no, I can't average and then square because then it just gets zero. But if I take the square and then average it, <clears throat> then I'm looking for this value right here. Where do you think that is? You see, this value up at the top, this top value is what? The top value is simply V max square, right? That's what it means. V squared max is V max squared, so that's fine. But um, V squared averaged is just half that big. Look at it. Isn't it half that big? Of course it's half that big. It's symmetric around the halfway point. So this is one half. Now, careful. I'm going to write one half V max squared. Okay. All right. Now, here's my next plan. My next plan is to take the square root of this business right here. So I'm going to say V squared averaged and then screwed is, well, the screwed of that business right there. So this is 1 over screwed 2 times V max. Oh, that's a lovely conclusion. Wow. Turns out that every, excuse me, <coughs> every relationship where you've got a sign, 
has the same functionality right here. If you square it and then average it and then screw it, you will get one over root two of the maximum value of that function. That's really lovely. So I can say in, in a general sense, this will work for current and it'll work for, well, frankly, anything that is changing sinusoidally or cosinusoidally. I take any variable and I square it and I average the square and I screwed it and this is 1 over root 2 times the maximum value of that variable. And this thing right here, this squaring and then meaning and screwing is called the RMS value. It stands for root mean squared because I'm taking the root and I'm taking the mean and I'm squaring it. Not in that order though. I'm square mean rooting it, but it's called root mean square, so you have to get used to that. And this is just whatever the maximum value of that sucker is divided by root two. So let's uh, let's say a couple things, and then I'll make some uh, some shout outs to you. There's um, <clears throat> well, there's power, right? And you know that power in a resistor, like my hot plate, power is I square times r. And if power is i squared times r, then it's simply going to be i max square times r. Oh, and then there's this sine square of omega t. But that, you see, this works instantaneously. This is the power at any instant. But the voltage and the current are changing sinusoidally. So at these instants right here, the power delivered by the circuit to my resistor is actually zero. And here, this is huge power. And this is also huge power. It doesn't matter that the current's going the other direction. In a resistor, it's gonna heat up either way. Huge power, huge power, no power, no power, no power, no power. This is another advantage of, DC, of AC over DC, actually. Even though it seems like it just makes it more complicated, it makes it really lovely. So this is true instantaneously, but I can tell you another equation, like power average equals current RMS, square times R, and so that means, wait a second, the average power, wait, if I take I RMS, this thing right here, and I square it, I'm going to get I square, wait a second, that's I max square times R divided by two. Interesting. All right, and this is true at any time. This doesn't have any time dependence because I'm looking for average. The beautiful thing is, We've had all this complication, and we get back all of our standard equations. Power is IV. As long as I use RMS, RMS, I'm still good. I can find the average power. And uh, I get power is I squared times R. If I use RMS current, and then I will get average power. And we can also say that power is V squared over R if you use RMS voltage, then you'll get average power. Yay, everything we knew already. Oh, and also V is I R. It's true that this is true instantaneously, but also the RMS voltage is the RMS current times the resistance of our resistor. Yay, we got everything back. Now, the only, oh shoot. This right here, average power. This right here, I squared max times R, is maximum power. So the maximum power divided by two is the average power because power depends on the square of the current function, or depending on how you look at it, I guess it depends on the square of the voltage function. So you've sometimes got zero power, and you've sometimes got maximum power, but your average power is right smack in the middle of the average and the maximum, and that makes sense, I think. So let's look at just one example of this beautiful equation here, the RMS voltage. In fact, US says that VRMS is, oh, what do they say? They say the RMS voltage is 120 volts from my electrical supplier. 
and I know that the RMS voltage is the maximum voltage divided by the screwed of two. So I can find that the maximum voltage is, oh, what do you get? 170 volts or so. Whoa, so they've been telling me it's 120 volts, but really it's 170. No, it's 170 some of the time. Here's voltage as a function of time, and it's making this sine graph. The maximum value is 170, but the RMS is one over root two of that, so the RMS is like right here. That's the RMS voltage, and of course, it's not the same thing as the average, because the average voltage is zero, but it's a way to indicate to us the amount of voltage that is there on a root mean squared kind of level. I, I don't know any better way to say it. And uh, hello, everybody in India. They tell me that your RMS voltage is, what do they say? I think they say that it's 220 volts, and that's your maximum voltage divided by the screwed of two. So the Vmax in India is about 311 volts. Wow, okay. So and I think in Europe they'd find it to be 320 or 330 volts. That's just the difference between the maximum value here and the RMS value that I've shown in green. Goodbye.